We're here with Staben from LTTS, and one of the biggest technology topics that people are talking about these days is 5G. So what is LTTS's view of 5G and, and, where, and where is it going? 5G is something which is going to encompass and basically cover all industry segments. It's going to go into the transport industry, it is going to go into industrials, and that is where for us it's in exciting times because that's where we believe our core strength in industrial transport and those areas come to bear basically when we are talking to customers, customers are looking at how do we leverage 5G? How do we take advantage of IoT? As industrial IoT becomes all pervasive, because IoT, you know, people have talked about IoT for a long, long time, but 5G is going to make it real. Previously, the bandwidth charges, the type of data networks which were available were limited in terms of basically because they were always designed for consumers. Now, things are changing. And I believe this is an opportunity for us, and that's what, for us, it's exciting times. So IoT is obviously a market that is burgeoning. It's, we're, we're right on the brink of people really taking advantage of it. So narrowband IoT is obviously a, a, big, a big part of that. What, uh, what does your company specifically bring to narrowband IoT? Sure. Narrowband IoT really is not something which was initially part of the 5G specifications. It started with the LTE, the 4G specification, but now the 3GPP standards body has made narrowband IoT as a fundamental part of the 5G world. Now what does narrowband IoT give you? It gives you hub duplex connectivity, again it covers the fundamental problems which you have in the IoT world. The IoT world had a problem of basically not wanting to spend data bandwidths to basically access, access remote sensors. Look at your metering, right? You know, you need metering data only once in a while. You don't want to put an expensive modem which is basically going to basically track data and basically you have to pay for fundamentally high RPU charges for those things. So Narubai and IoT solves those problems. We saw that this as a fundamental way of attacking the market. We being a services company, we, we decided that we have to take a different approach to the market. What we did is we invested in building a semiconductor stack. We invested in building an L2, L3 layer stack, which we could then license to semiconductor companies who can build their ASICs, their chipsets for narrowband devices, which are going to get prevalent. We were seeing a lot of traction in the US market and we are seeing a lot of traction in the Chinese market. So again, our bets on the narrowband IoT have definitely played out, but our approach is really right from the stack, right? Rather than basically approaching approaching it from a market segment perspective, we decided to approach it from a fundamental technology perspective and bring the technology to bear so that we have a long-term play in it, right? You know, because licensing model which we are creating with the semiconductor companies are going to give us long-term revenue models as well as long-term sustainability from a market perspective. So as we speak, we have, we have at least four companies which have licensed our product. We have trials going on with various service providers in the market. That's that, that's the value which we are bringing to the market. So as 2019 rolls and NBIRT becomes more core into the market, as industries basically start adopting NBIRT, we are extremely confident that there will be at least a large percentage of devices which will be based on our technology stack which will be there in the market. Stavin, thanks so much for, uh, for, for giving us a market update and really uh, giving us a lot to look forward to. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.